Hello and welcome. Today we're working on accounting for bad debts in the receivables chapter. If you're new here, my name is Jeff from finallylearn.com where I teach the financial accounting series. I teach uh, Excel, lots of financial related things. So here we are in the financial accounting chapters and we're looking at accounting for receivables. I already have a video that explains all these things about bad debts. So we're just going to get right into the problems pretty quickly here. I've got articles, I've got videos, and I've got playlists. So join us if you're trying to learn accounting. Now, what we have for accounting for bad debts, just real quickly, we call them bad debts or doubtful accounts or uncollectible accounts. If we have a, a receivable that we cannot collect, then we can call it bad debts or these other and we have bad debt expense to write it off. So it's an asset that gets written off as bad debt expense. There's two methods we're going to use to account for bad debts. The allowance method is the gap method, the financial accounting way. The direct write-off method is the tax method. Now, when we get to the allowance method, there's two ways to estimate. There's percent of sales, and if you do percent of sales, that gives you the bad debt expense amount or the entry amount. And if you do percent of receivables, that gives us the allowance account balance. Now, go back and look at the previous video. Check the link below. This gives you a, a complete set of notes for this chapter relates to bad debts. All right, so let's look at our first problem. So let's say we have the Sun Company. Our sales are $650,000. Our account receivable is $60,000. And then the allowance for doubtful accounts has a credit balance of $300. We're going to use three different ways to do this. The first two ways are um, choices we can make percent of sales or percent of receivables, and then somebody cannot pay uh, next year sometime. All right, so let's get started with uh, bad debts as 1% of sales. Let's assume that our sales, 1% of sales will be uncollected. So what is our sales? Our sales are 650,000. Now 1% be careful on this, 1% is 0 .01 in decimal form. So if we take 650,000 times 1%, what do we get? Well, 6,500. Well, what do we do with that number? Remember, if we do percent of sales, remember I'm making the point up here, we're gonna, that's our bad debt expense entry. All right, so our entry is gonna be bad debt expense, and credit allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm not going to write all that out completely, but you'll know what that is. So that 6,500 is our expense and how much goes into our allowance, 6,500. So if we say we're going to estimate bad debts as 1% of sales, then we say here's our entry, bad debt expense, allowance for doubtful accounts, the 1%. Now let's go back and look at the allowance for doubtful accounts. It already had a balance of 300 in it, and now we just added 6,500. So what is the total of the allowance for doubtful accounts? Well, it's 300 plus 6,500. That's 6,800 is our allowance for doubtful accounts. Now. Um, I'm going to do this one time on, on these and then we'll uh, skip on to the other ones. But allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra asset that reduces net accounts receivable. So what is our accounts receivable here in this case? Well, it's 60000 So 60000 is our accounts receivable. Our allowance we said is 6800 So how much do we expect to collect? Well, our net accounts receivable is also the net realizable value. That's how much we expect to collect is 53,200. All right, so even though we legally owed 60,000, we expect to collect the asset we're having on our balance sheet is 53,200. What is our accounts receivable? Our accounts receivable is 60,000. What is our percent? Well, 7%, which is 0 0.07. So if we take 60,000 times 0 0.07, we get 4,200. Now, what do we do with that number? Remember, when we're a percent of receivables, that gives us the allowance balance, 4,200. We already have 
300 in for the allowance for doubtful accounts. So what entry do we need to make? Well, 4,200 minus the 300. We're going to need to make an entry for 3,900. And what's the entry? It is bad debt expense. an allowance for doubtful accounts. And the amount we're going to use is the 3,900. All right, so if we estimate as a percentage of accounts receivable, then we get the allowance balance and we back in to find the bad debt expense journal entry number. All right, so on July 15th, Jones Company cannot pay the 200 and we're on the allowance method. So what entry do we need to make? We're gonna debit the allowance for doubtful accounts and we're gonna write off the accounts receivable for Jones in the amount of $200. If we have somebody that can't pay and we're on the allowance method, it's not an expense when they can't pay. We've already made the expense when we made the sale. We just use that and reduce the allowance account balance. So the allowance for doubtful accounts has 300 in it, has 3,900 in it, and now we're debiting that account for $200. So what's the balance gonna be? Well, 300 plus 3,900 minus 200 so it has a balance of $4,000. All right, what if we're on the direct write-off method and we have to write off an account? Well, the entry is gonna be very similar, except we didn't make an estimate ahead of time for the bad debt expense and the allowance. So therefore, it's gonna be for 200, we're gonna write off the Jones account, but this is just gonna be bad debt expense. All right, now let's do problem two. Similar problem. We've got sales, we've got accounts receivable, and this is gonna be a little different. This is a debit balance rather than a credit balance. All right, so same kind of problem here. Let's get started with this one. So bad debts is a half percent of sales. Our sales are 850,000. And what is half percent? 0 0.005. So a half percent is less than 1%. So 1% would be 0 0.01 in decimal form. This is 0 0.005. So if we multiply that together, 850,000 times a half percent, we get 4,250. Now what do we do with that number? Well, remember we just say bad debt expense. and we credit the allowance for doubtful accounts, so the allowance account, and it's gonna be in the amount of 4,250, 4,250. All right, so the allowance for doubtful accounts has a $400 debit balance. We just put in 4,250, so what's the balance of the allowance account? 4,250 minus 400. So the balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts is $38.50. All right, what if, switching our, our um, estimate here, what if our bad debts is 5% of accounts receivable rather than a half percent of sales? Well, what is our accounts receivable in this problem? Well, it's 90,000. And what is 5%? 0 0.05. So if we multiply that together, 90,000 times 0.05, we get $4,500. Now, the allowance balance already has 400 in it, and we just, as a debit, and we just calculated that we want the allowance account to have a $4,500 balance. So what does it take? Well, these are opposite sides. So I've got to take a larger credit to make the balance 4,500. So basically what you have to do is 4,500 plus the 4,400 and equals 4,900. I knew what it was gonna be, so I tried to tell you early. So 4,900, so if we take 400 minus 4,900, you get 4,500. 
So we're going to make an entry for this amount. So instead of making an entry for what we just calculated, we have to back in to find back in to find this number right here. So this is going to be 4,900 and 4,900. So if we take a percent of receivables, that gives us the allowance balance. If we take percent of sales, that gives us our bad debt expense. So this 4,500 gives us the allowance balance. All right, what if Johnson cannot pay the bills and we're on the allowance method? Well, then we debit the allowance for doubtful accounts. We write off the accounts receivable for Johnson in the amount of 500. So what do we have? We have a $400 debit, a $4,900 credit, and now we have another debit for $500. So what's the balance of the allowance account now? Well, $4,900 minus $400 minus $500 looks like it's going to be exactly $4,000. All right, so let me ask you a question here. What if, if we're looking at our net accounts receivable, if we have a write-off, does that change our net accounts receivable? So let's think about what we have. Now before, what was our accounts receivable balance? It was 90000 What is our allowance? Well, our allowance is 4500 So what is... The net accounts receivable, eighty-five thousand five hundred. But we just wrote off an account for five hundred, so we take the ninety thousand minus the five hundred, and we take the forty-five hundred. Get rid of the uh, uh, five hundred here. So we're down to four thousand because that's this number right here. So what is our net account receivable after a write-off? It's still going to be the same. So 85500 is how much we expect to collect. Even if we have an account for 500 everything goes down, but the net account, uh, net account receivable stays the same. All right, what if Johnson can't pay the bills for 500 and we're on the direct write-off method? What's the entry to write off an account under direct write-off? Well, bad debt expense and account receivable for Johnson. And the amount is 500. All right, hope this is helpful in a way for you to learn bad debts, the allowance method and the direct write-off method. We'll see you on the next video. We'll do some more problems on bad debts. Hey, thanks for watching.